day eight of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Here's the latest at this hour. Dramatic blasts happening all across the country, including the northern city of Chernobyl. Verified dash cam footage capturing two large explosions hitting residential buildings, causing massive devastation. French President Emmanuel Macron speaking of Vladimir Putin on the phone for an hour and a half, pushing for an end to the fighting. A French government source telling ABC that after that call, President Macron now believes the worst is yet to come. And as Russian troops attempt to surround several major cities, a second round of peace talks just ended between Ukrainian and Russian negotiators in Belarus. An aide to President Zelensky saying Ukraine's priorities in the talks, reaching an immediate ceasefire, as well as the evacuation of civilians. But we do begin with those peace talks, and we are getting word that they went nowhere, as we still see reports of civilian areas and infrastructure getting targeted and destroyed in Ukraine. Let's get straight to the very latest with ABC's Aaron Katursky in Ukraine, also Phil Lipoff once again in Poland. Phil, let's start with you. What can you tell us about this second round of ceasefire talks that just ended in Belarus? Well, Kira, there was hope around the world, certainly, that something would come of these peace talks and, and the killing would stop. But as you mentioned, an aide to President Zelensky has said that the intended results were not reached. And what, what were the results that they wanted? Uh, President Zelensky wanted Russian troops out of his country uh, to obviously stop attacking his country. Vladimir Putin has said uh, he wanted to demilitarize Ukraine. Both of those goals are at odds. Uh, it's a second round of talks. The first round went nowhere. It seems like this second round uh, didn't achieve anything good either. And so what do we have? We have Russian troops surrounding five major cities. The bombing continues and the talks going nowhere. So, Aaron, what do we know then uh, taking this news into light? Has it impacted troop movements at this hour? Doesn't seem to have impacted troop movements, but neither did the, the, the prospect of any talks. At least they agreed to keep talking, and a third round of talks is supposed to happen as soon as possible. But the conditions for those talks, uh, we're not sure that, the, that the, what's going on on the ground could, could really precede them because there's been more bombardment of major Ukrainian cities. The Russians have taken their first one, Kherson, in the southeast, a port city. They've, uh, they've been bombarding rather ferociously Mariupol, that's another strategic port city. The, the Russian naval fleet has been spotted off the, uh, in, the, in the Black Sea, uh, and that's menacing Odessa. And taken together, that could cut off this country's access to the sea. In the meantime, there's been heavy bombardment in uh, Chernihiv, as you said, and Kharkiv. And both of those cities, the uh, local authorities tell us there have been civilian casualties. And so, Aaron, what do you make of that secret press conference that we also followed today with a much less optimistic uh, President Zelensky? He gave the most frank assessment that we've heard about how long his forces can hold out against the Russians, telling ABC's Ian Panel, I don't know. And he still is defiant. In his morning message posted on social media, he spoke about the invincibility of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian military. And he spoke once again in the news conference directly to Russians who may be listening, telling Russian mothers, don't send your sons to die here. But as he's projecting this confidence, he also knows that eventually, at some point, uh, his forces can be overrun. If Vladimir Putin's troops are having success in the south, as it seems, that opens up another possible corridor to get to the capital. It could take a long time, but Russia seems content to wait. And Phil, uh, half a million children now have become refugees, possibly making this Europe's largest refu refugee crisis since World War II. This has been the one story you have been on for us day and night, uh, going on almost two weeks. At this point in time, at this hour, what are the biggest needs for those families? Well, it seems... It seems like this is an obvious answer, Kira, and it is, but the biggest need is for the war to stop, for them to be able to cross back over the border and for families to reunite with their husbands and their brothers. But in lieu of that happening, their biggest need is to take shelter 
here in Poland. You mentioned half a million children. Uh, it's ha here in Lublin, Poland, and in Poland in general, Poland has taken more than a half a million people, and most of the people who are the refugees who have come into this country are children, and the mothers are doing everything they can to keep their children shielded best as they can from the information, but that's really hard. We've been talking to refugees, uh, mothers who have told us that children as young as three know what's going on, asking questions like, you know, why are there tanks? Why are there helicopters? Why is daddy fighting? These are all heartbreaking questions that a parent would have to answer. So their, their biggest need is obviously to get back to life as it was, but we all know that is, is not going to happen anytime soon, so they need to settle here for a while. So they are deciding to, to make homes there, to make this their new home and, and not think about actually returning back to Ukraine anytime soon. Well, sure, that's what they want to do, but we, we all know the reality and they certainly know the reality because before they came here to Poland and to other countries, they, they watched the war begin. They watched the violence start and the killing start. So some will be with family and friends. Uh, as I've mentioned before, two million Ukrainians already live here in Poland. So the, the refugees coming across the border will have family and friends here. Others are going to need shelter, and there are shelters being set up all across this country. Uh, we went to one a couple of days ago with a family that had nowhere to go, and this shelter was right up near the uh, Belarus-Poland border uh, where, these, where these talks took place and uh, you can actually see Belarus from the shelter it was a forestry service building that they have just given to civilians to open up a shelter and that's happening all across the country so Aaron before we let you go we have now learned today that the International Criminal Court will expedite an, an investigation now of possible war crimes committed by the Russians in Ukraine so what more can you tell us about that and does this include Putin well, it does, uh, because he would be giving the orders. And, and the fear is that the Russians have been using cluster munitions. And that would increase the possibility of civilian casualties. Already, the Ukrainians have documented what they say is at least one instance where cluster munitions were fired. It would violate uh, the, the, the international law. The problem is neither Ukraine nor Russia are parties to the International Criminal Court. Ukraine said it will allow investigators onto its soil to confirm these reports of cluster munitions. But even if they come back with a positive result, we're not sure it's going to necessarily move Vladimir Putin. But it reinforces, Kira, why there are so many people we've met here that do not want to live under Russian rule. That possibility is motivating them to join the resistance by either picking up a weapon, by making a camouflage net, or doing something else with their hands to contribute. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to just see everybody rising up uh, in that country right now. Aaron and Phil, thanks guys so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.